because there's a distinct lack of dog bins across the board. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm pleased that we're, we're having areas uh, you know, where, where the dogs are on lead, say, picnic areas. But I really do feel that if we had dog bins somewhere near, so I didn't have to put my dog's poo in a dog bin by a picnic area where I'm just going to have a picnic, <coughs> it would be more sensible. And clearly, you want to put bins by picnic areas so people can put their rubbish in. So I, I think we're not meeting ourselves halfway here. And um, amongst my other questions, I, yeah, I'm concerned that if you clog up some areas and say you can't walk in them, people are just going to move to other areas because people have got to walk their dog somewhere. Yes. And we are a borough that is looking at healthy living, with our emphasis yes. on everything, mm -hmm. and we all know walking is <laughs> It's the few who aren't here. I don't think as many people here. Yeah. Yeah. There's other things like that's not mentioned in this. We have a thing on world, don't we? That if your dog is caught misbehaving, is aggressive to another dog or a person, you are either fined or you can go on a course. Like when you caught speeding, you can go on that course. Yeah. And people have to go on it. That is a positive thing. That helps people understand. And people have to understand, as Mike has said, that our dogs do... Sorry, I've changed your name again. <laughs> 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 I want to say I'm old. I forget names. <laughs> um, Touche. Um, that, you know, I know when I've had... Um, large, retired, working dogs of the German Shepherd variety, that if anybody comes near me <coughs> from behind, they won't bark. They just get their arms around you and pull that person down. And then I have to tell the police it's happened so that they're not reported as having a dangerous dog. That is what dogs do when they're trained to protect. And if they're not trained to protect and they're frightened for you, they will bark. I mean, what, are we, what are they supposed to do? People talk, people shout when they get annoyed, they're doing the same thing. But it just seems as if there's no evidence here, what well, I can find, that says anywhere that it's going to improve things. For the few, the few are going to suddenly change. And for the rest of us, it's kind of demonising us. Yeah. I, I have a was walking his dog on playing fields that are not part of Borough Borough Council and are not part of this. And he was shouted at by somebody who wasn't playing football and told to get up and move and everything else. And he was really upset. And residents around contacted the Bevington councillors to say how upset they were. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to split us all up and it's not worth it. Does that exist? And if it does, 
Moja i Južiget. Moja i Južiget. Moja i Južiget.
I've been a councillor for almost 19 years now. And, and not once during that 19 years has a resident contacted me about dog value on a playing field. Not once. However, I get contacted almost weekly during the playing season by residents who complain about football teams oh, and yeah. they're supporting yeah. all that. and Darren Marcus must be fed up with me writing. I've had a response back from Nick today, uh, from Darren today, saying he's asked the people in England Park now to the, the attendant to issue rubbish bags to for the council attendant to issue rubbish bags to these teams in an effort to get them to collect their rubbish. Well, you know, it's not dogs which will be controlling, it's people. To, you know, how many, how, how, if Kingdom cannot enforce a simple dog fouling exercise now, because according to Mark Smith, it's too difficult, uh, how will Kingdom enforce a PSPO? And, you know, we have to look back, and, and again, your report recognises this, there's, there's, it says, there's a petition of 15,036 signatures submitted to council. I was a person who submitted that on behalf of the two groups. But you took another position of 15,286 online. That's over 30,000 people who signed petitions objecting to these proposals. You know, these are draconian proposals. You already have powers, as Christina pointed out, in cemeteries. You're prepared to relax them almost in an effort to buy the others. And I find that to be despicable and outrageous. And if you have So it will come as no surprise that no, you haven't convinced me that this PSPO is valid, will do any good for the people of Nora. It will drive, you know, if, if it came in, it does nothing to deal with dog fouling in residential streets. It does nothing to do with, to deal with dog fouling outside schools. It does nothing to do with dog fouling in shopping areas. And yet it punishes the majority, the majority for the actions of the few. And that is, presentation prior to this being going to the public uh, consultation with the PSPOs that, that I came to that presentation and after about 15 or 20 minutes I said well let's stop here why are you taking the sledgehammer to crack it off why don't you just get Kingdom to deal with the dog founding issues and the issues you've got pounds for and yet you weren't interested the, the cabinet member at the time Matthew Patrick wasn't interested uh, I made that right at the outset before you went to public consultation. You still took this forward. You've got it wrong, Mike. You have to admit you've got it wrong. And, uh, and I hope you, as an Taking their children to school, and in the, my last house where I lived, 
It was actually the road down to the park that had the issue. It wasn't the park itself where people were exercising their dogs. And the other point was that I came down this morning to find it. And the issue we've always had with Kingdom is they don't work during the times when people actually walk their dogs anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then you don't go, well, <laughs> people take their dogs for a walk in the morning when Kingdom aren't even working yet. Or they take them for a walk at night when they finish for the day. They, they don't get any, they don't ever issue any fines to them anyway. So the whole point where Kingdom would actually enforce any dog fouling that is an issue for residents. Kingdom aren't at work yet, or, they're, or they've already clocked off for the day. Um, the one thing as well with the Kingdom contract, that if you dig into some of the stats when we have lots of litter issues, if you actually go down and see what types of litter is, is, is the main cause of the fine, it's cigarette butts. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's very easy to stand outside the club and tick them off, fine after fine, as people come outside, have a smoke before they go back in and flick their cigarette butt on the floor. Now, some of these fines about uh, pictures seem very easy for a kingdom officer to hide in the bushes on a playing f at the edge of a playing field, waiting for dog owners to come along. As soon as they cross that white line, the fine comes out. Whereas dog foul is a much harder prospect, as we've already seen. It's already under the, uh, the uh, collection of uh, kingdom's uh, contract, and they, they're not finding anyone now. So it's going to be the easy wins. It's not going to be the number one issue of street cleanliness in Wirral that's going to be yeah. attacked by the <laughs> As I said, been said a number of times tonight, it's a sledgehammer to crack a nut. You know, 0.5% of people on Wirral, it's a tiny minority. And we're going to stop people from accessing public open spaces. As, as Councillor Blakey said, the keys in the web public. Yeah. 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 Members of the public should be able to access this land for exercise for themselves, for their dogs, for mental health <coughs> reasons. And as one of the residents told me, it, it's a big issue around social isolation. So there was one resident that said to me they wouldn't go outside of their house anymore because all they did was take their dog out once a day to the local park, which was one of the parks that would be covered by this park. And they wouldn't be able to do that. That's the one thing they did to get out of their house. Now, social isolation is a massive issue for people in the world, especially with an aging population and across the country. And as Christine said, we've done quite a lot of work on social isolation yeah. in the world south. And it'd be a shame to see things going backwards from a draconian ban to stop people from going out to enjoy their, their pets across the world. It's um, got nothing to do with dog fowling. It's all about raising revenue for kingdom. Yeah. People are already saying that it's about raising money, it's about issuing fines, yeah, it's not good. about changing behaviour. Why do you think they got kicked out of Liverpool? That's there's, right. There's not yeah. behaviour. Yeah, yeah. Wales. I don't want to work for Kingdom and you need kicking out of the Wirral. More about yes. the incident today. Yeah? Do you know what I'm saying? You might want to remind everybody, please. For assault. Can I just remind everybody, please? This is a scrutiny meeting. It's being held in public, it's not a public meeting. <coughs> and I just remind you please, if you can, moderate your tone. It's great, greatly appreciated. I'll come back to Councillor Cox, and you finish Councillor Cox? I've one more point to make. <coughs> um, so, as I said, as far as a, a PR exercise, it's already gone down the history of uh, one of the world's uh, classic examples of how, how, to, how to fail at PR. Um, but, but one final point is, is we're all, it's often marketed as a great place for people to come and visit. Our visitor economy is meant to be one of our prized assets. And one of those is, is all the coastline and open spaces that we have that people come to enjoy. They, they come for walks, they come to enjoy our outdoor space that maybe they don't have in city centres like Liverpool or surrounding areas like that. Um, and we're going to ban anyone who's got dogs from coming over, or we'll certainly put them off. Yeah. Yeah. What's that going to do to our visitor economy? How's that going to impact on our businesses that rely on dog walkers oh, coming and going to the, to the cafes in Eastern Park or, or so on? How's it going to affect people going to West Kirby? The people won't come, they'll go somewhere else, and that will impact on our residents. So there's, there's so many reasons. I mean, I'm not a dog owner. I mean, I, it's not personal. I, I, I've never had dogs. 
my, my, my wife's actually scared of dogs. But the point is, is that this is just not going to work for any of the reasons. It doesn't work for dog owners, it doesn't work for people who don't have dogs, it doesn't work for anyone. It's just totally pointless and we need to start it.
So, so this is so not I this is not <laughs> evidential. This is just hearsay. It's anecdotal. It's anecdotal. It's hearsay. There's no evidence to support it whatsoever. There is, there is a problem in our parts of countryside team, a, a, a culture of not reporting answers. There, there's a problem in your parts of countryside team for, for, for using Facebook to promote the PSPF. That's where you've got a problem in your parts of countryside team. Would you like to carry on, Mike? Excuse me. Mike, can you carry on answering the questions, please? That have been asked. We're just, Christine, can, can we just have three questions or the questions from the three councillors that have been asked? Can we have them answered? Okay. And go to the rest of the councillors, and then if we have time, we'll have supplementary questions. Please carry on, Mike. Yeah, we, we, we completely concur with the position you mentioned about lack of um, litter bins or bins not being in the right place, and we want to work with people on addressing that. There is no consideration for dog uh, foul only bins, they go into litter bins, that's, 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 that's perfectly acceptable. And domestic bins, we want to work with people, we accept that there, 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 there needs to be a better review, a better place for these, that's what we want to work on. And in terms of displacements, yes, accepted. We want to promote alternative locations, alternative walking locations on the wheel. In terms, in terms of uh, Council Blakely. Sorry, you didn't answer my question on the yes. facilities that we already have in terms of punishment. In, in terms of, I think we, I think throughout life now we are being told that punishment isn't the way forward. That's how now we have these. Uh, where the victim meets the uh, the perpetrator, and that's why I understood we were give people were given the opportunity to go on dog training courses rather than be fined. So what I'm asking is, where does that appear in here? Because that's what we have present. Uh, we we uh, we will take enforcement action against uh, problems with dog control and, and, and dog farming. So the question I'm asking is why, when we have a perfectly good system at the moment, whereby if you choose not to be fined, you can go on a course. Now, you don't appear to believe what I'm saying, but believe me, the plenty of people in this room will tell you that's what happened. If your dog has been seen to be aggressive, you are asked to go on dog training courses. Now, why isn't that in here? Because I would have thought that was sensible. If we want to improve the view, the many of us would like to see the view's dog's behaviour improve. We would like to see that. Because it's positive, Mike. It, it's, it's saying to people, all right, you don't pay the fine, but you will go and learn about how your dog should behave. Back to that answer because you did manage to squeeze a supplementary in there. No, sorry, I asked. Can you continue answering Councillor Blakey's questions, please? <coughs> and then we must move on. Okay. The first one was that the PSPO was in draft. I mean, you, you, the, the presentation sets out what the PSPO we, we, we intended to include. It was clear, it was set out in clear uh, bullet points in the presentation. The, the PSPO is, is a far draft, but it needs to be. Completely ready for ready for when, when the council makes the decision in terms of the draft documents. But the, the principles, the, the, the measures that they contain within it will set out in the presentation. Chairman, if we look at the, you know, with the greatest respect, Mike, you stated it is still being worked on. It is still being worked on. You never said it was a final draft. In your presentation, draft PS <coughs> is still being worked on. The document that was attached is not the final document. We're not making a decision, the chairman, at that point at the start, this isn't a decision making. We're working towards that. I mean, you've got the principles of the proposal in front of you, that's what we're saying. That's, that's, it's no more than, or less than that. It's a draft final document, which gives you an indication of what it will look like um, as we make the decision. But, but we're being asked to make a recommendation <coughs> to cabinet. And if we make a recommendation to cabinet, that your, your recommendations in the report carry, then that will form part of the PSPO. It's, so it's, you know, when you say it's still being worked on, what parts of it are still being worked on? What parts of it are we not seeing? 
What parts will we pull in after we've made the decision? Literally, in terms of it, literally, in terms of uh, attachments to the back, there's a series of uh, map, maps, etc. We want to speak to in it, but the, the wording of documents, the road draft, is in its final stage. Okay. In terms of um, dog filing and, um, and, and dog filing levels, and that maybe we related to um, committee meeting previously where we talked about numbers, um, it is more difficult to, to find people for dog filing and catch them not picking them up the dog than, than other forms of enforcement. And the word of illustration, Arnsley Council in, uh, I think it was 1617, with the lead council in the UK for issuing fixed bond notices, and they issued 315 notices in a year. So it's not going to be prolific, it isn't prolific, it isn't thousands like this in terms of potential literacy, it's a smaller number that we're talking about. So that's, that's the UK's biggest output, that gives you some kind of context about that as possible. But, but again, Chair, it'll be late back soon. Then how is the TPO going to make that better? How is that going to make that better? The dog fouling enforcement happens now. It took people mentioned in previous sequels from councils about it doesn't apply to streets or it doesn't apply to uh, outside the house. It applies everywhere. The enforcement of dog fouling applies to all the personnel over spaces like park. It applies everywhere. Chair, I recognise that dog fouling enforcement applies everywhere. The fact is, it's not taking place. The fact is, 10 in a 13 week period, you know, and yet you're saying that, that issuing this PSPO will somehow miraculously make it easier to issue dog fouling fixed penalty notices. It will, re it will reduce fixed, uh, dog fouling in the border. That's the point you're making, Mike, and the point I'm making is how is that going to happen? If it's difficult now, how is the PSPO going to make it easier? Question. Well, you asked the question about um, additional resources. They will need to, uh, our, our contractors will need to deploy additional resources at their risk to, to carry out the, the, the enforcement of the nations. Well, so, so, so what, what you're saying then, Mike, is that the report is right, the council will not be incurring any more costs. No. So, so, it works. It's, it's, so, no, so, so what you're saying, so what you're saying is, Kingdom will have to deploy more staff at their cost in order to make this work. Correct. Yeah, so right. so the only way Kingdom are going to recover that money is by issuing fines. <laughs> 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 so what is this isn't about cleaning up the bullet. This isn't about making a better place. This isn't about better better for people across the border. This is purely a money-making system. I've told the public that's spoken about their, their uh, irritation and putting dog fighting in priority. Dog fighting is occurring. Involved in crimes, that's what it is. Involved in crimes is occurring. Uh, day in, day out. And we as a council, you have asked us the council told us to do something about it, and we put a, a contract in place that's doing that. So yes, they, they, they exist to carry out our instruction, which is to carry out uh, enforcement against the violence of crime. So, so if, if I may, just following up on that. So why have not Kingdom deployed more staff to deal with the existing dog valley problem? Because clearly they haven't. Uh, so why haven't they not? I mean, when I asked the question originally uh, about 18 months ago, how many staff of kingdoms were, were uh, specifically tasked to deal with dog family? The answer was zero. There were six kingdom staff at that time to cover the whole of the borough on both littering and dog family, working three ships. I'm going to say three ships, it was sort of eight till two, two till eight, it was a mixture, two days off, blah, blah, blah. So, what you're saying now is, if, if, this, if we want to have this PSPM, then Kingdom will be responsible for the enforcement. Kingdom will employ more staff at their cost, and the only way they're going to recover that cost is, as Christina said, is by hiding in bushes 
finding someone walking along the dock. Hang on, you can have a double head there. Someone walking along, someone walking along with seven dogs, smoking a cigarette, and treading over a white line.
how it's been rolled out and the specifics which this uh, committee actually requested, which was for Kingdom to go away, uh, not focused primarily or specifically or only on cigarette uh, disposal, which is a fantastic thing to try to go down on, but as, uh, as has been ex expressed by Mark Smith, uh, it's much more difficult and probably much more difficult to gain revenue by actually trying to find someone for um, uh, leading dog excrement and not picking up behind themselves like that is something that we specifically said we wanted Kingdom to be directed to go away and put uh, focus upon and clearly it's not being rolled out, it's not being uh, 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 communicated to them because they're clearly not doing it from the figures that Councillor Blakely actually said before that the focus is still on the easy win and the easy fine and that's just not good enough so I don't believe that there's any justification to actually bring in the PCSL when we haven't really given um, the current measures, the opportunity, and they've not been implemented correctly either. And the other one, with regards to don't allow dogs to attack other dogs or uh, people, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually illegal under the Dangerous Dogs Act for, for dogs to be uh, left at any point uh, out of control. It's, so if they look dangerous, uh, or if they are dangerous, if they uh, were to bite someone or look like they are going to, uh, or they're just generally out of control, that's illegal. So that is again something that can quite easily be within laws uh, that already exist within this land, can actually be enforced. So a couple of questions on those specifics, which are, can you explain why dog attacks can't be enforced and dog owners prosecuted under current arrangements and laws? Yeah. And the second one also, why current uh, priorities have not been set for Kingdom to look specifically at dog founder uh, instead of focusing on the easy wins like cigarette disposal, as specifically respect, uh, requested by this committee. And then just to work something on a slightly different uh, focus, which is regards to cost. The, uh, the report actually states that the, uh, um, there will be no cost effectively for the council. I think this is either misleading or just playing wrong, like, because you contradict yourself in the, in the uh, following. Yeah. Uh, uh, following Paragraph a bit of it, I can just uh, read from it. The implementation and coordination of the dog control PCSO will be met within existing resources from a number of service, service areas. Later on, it says there will be no costs incurred by the council for the provision of enforcing the measures of the dog control PCSO. However, in the just in that in that same paragraph, it actually then goes on to say the council will incur the cost of the initial training, the enforcement of contracts. Contractors' offices will be on dog behaviour and equality issues, yeah. but it's not just that, is it? There's, there'll be the consultation period whereby we already know, or we seem to have accepted that the Will News doesn't do its job, no one either gets it or no one cares and no one reads it anyway. So we actually now pay for when we do a consultation with the Globe advertisements, so there's some costs. It's the training of the contractors, there's some costs. And also, uh, it'll no doubt be the infinite amount of signage and road uh, uh, work that will have to be put up on the signs and the uh, posting of leaflets and the posting of leaflets through people's doors. There's an infinite amount of cost, so, so actually suggest that there's no cost to council and to these people here who are council taxpayers, no doubt. It's, it's just misleading.